Being a philanthropist is harder than it seems. What do you mean I'm no longer allowed in the state of New Jersey? <sighs> Tonight, we bring you a little fluff with the story of a YouTuber who's just changing the world with his random acts of money. Known online as Mr. Beast 6000, he spends all his time thinking about how to give his money away. Look at that, he's giving a waitress a brand new TV. Exactly what she'll need to get herself distracted from the crushing reality that is a $2.13 an hour job. Good God, I love this guy. Truly brightening someone's day. This surely is why tipping was invented. Anyways, I'm your host Michael, and today we'll be examining the difference between charity and philanthropy by exploring the viral acts of Mr. Beast in today's broadcast of The Art of Giving. Viral acts of kindness have a treacherous history online. From staged events to straight up fraud, things are never quite what they seem. So when headlines about Mr. Beast increased in frequency, our interest around the studio was piqued. Hailed as YouTube's viral philanthropist, Jimmy Donaldson, aka Mr. Beast, and his hundreds of videos have a dynamic range, from his earliest playing Minecraft to extreme and arduous challenges involving microwaves or Orbeez. Donaldson has left his career path on public for others to follow. But we're here to get to the nitty gritty of his philanthropy. Is Mr. Beast really improving the quality of life in this world? Does Donaldson's charitable nature dig deep, or is he just another flavor of prankster veiled by good intent? Luckily, Mr. Beast distilled his biography on Twitter rather succinctly. I started at 13 years old with no money, a horrible laptop, and no microphone. Every day for eight years, I've obsessed and reinvested everything I've made. I'm grateful to wake up happy and excited every day. And all I want in life is to make the best content possible. Heart emoticon. With countless videos detailing the potential profit of a YouTuber, one can see the obsession building inside Mr. Beast. Donaldson began to put these pieces together, developed a foundation of a YouTube career. He invested more and more time of this understanding in the economics of the platform and began building content around sharing those discoveries. He even went about speculating the net worth of popular YouTubers. Youthful interest came with a deeper understanding of YouTube and the economics at play. Mr. Beast had a breakthrough moment of international popularity when an article on his video counting to 100,000 in one video was syndicated. The entire experience took over 40 hours, which he condensed to 24 because of limitations within Premiere, Adobe's editing software. Mr. Beast's success came from his ability to capture the schadenfreude of the event that news atlas thrive on. Counting to 100,000 is a simple concept with a painful execution, and the borderline torture made for excitingly clickable headlines for Daily Mail, Business Insider, and more. Actually dubbing him a prankster, News Hub spins the act for parental inspiration. If your little ones are at a loss for activities to keep them entertained these holidays, here's an idea. Record themselves counting to 100,000. Mm -hmm. One successful aspect of this stunt is its repeatability. Most have the ability to count up to 100,000, and some are still trying to this day. Counting to 100,000 is a simple enough concept to be repeated by anyone, but it's also physically taxing enough that others are either discouraged from attempting it or fail outright. This accessibility and success made it interesting for viewers, young and old alike. What is strange, however, is that Mr. Beast wasn't the first to do this stunt. Moldy Toaster Media has a video from 2011 entitled John Counts to 100,000 though it is cut from several different takes. Donaldson certainly won't be the last to do it either. CJ So Cool recently uploaded an attempt that quit at just 1600. Still a simple and consistent setup and desire to do it all in one video set him apart from the rest of the other counters out there. This was Mr. Beast's first step into the international spotlight. The physical and mental toll 40 hours of recording counting would take were short term, but the long term effects became more and more apparent as Mr. Beast put out more and more videos. For most, the Counting to 100,000 video would have been the pinnacle, never to be surpassed, but Donaldson used this momentum to his advantage. He spent some time sacrificing pieces of himself and his sanity, all to satisfy the public's need for schadenfreude. But he found a way to deflect the suffering within his videos altogether. Within the year, Donaldson began giving money away. 
First, to homeless people on the streets and tipping delivery drivers, and later to friends, family, and anyone he'd meet on camera. With more views comes more money, and in Donaldson's case, that means more money to spend. Exploring a recent video entitled Tipping a Waitress in Gold Bars, we find Mr. Beast tipping waitresses in gold bars, as well as PlayStation 4s and laptops and televisions. Opening with the message, being a waitress is one of the hardest jobs in the world, Donaldson's voiceover quickly explains what's going to happen in the video. Conspicuously pulling the lavalier and t-shirt up to his mouth, Mr. Beast holds the giant gold bar and lets the viewers know that it's worth a hundred thousand. Explaining that he can't give this away just yet, Donaldson pulls out a mini bar or nugget of gold worth seven thousand. This is the first bait and switch of the video, with the thumbnail and description at odds with the actual content of the video. The thumbnail depicts a waitress yawing at amazement at a stack of 21 gold bars as she pulls one off the top of the stack. Now remember, each one of these is worth $160,000. This is the same waitress from later in the video at a restaurant called Sup Dogs, who really only receives a $7,000 nugget. Only. After ordering the water, Donaldson takes one sip and states, Ah, tastes like seven grand. He then holds up a napkin to which his buddy Chris reads, 7,000 in gold with weird G. They anchor the note with the gold nugget and take off, with every single second recorded by a cameraman in a booth not too far away. The waitress picks up the gold bar and asks the person filming if the gold is real or not, to which he replies, it is real. Dumbstruck, she gives them a hug and thank before they're off to the next spot. This server, Deborah Jones, would later appear in the local news, promoting the event and proclaiming it gave her the ability to buy her late father a headstone. At the next place, he again orders water. This time, he gives a PlayStation 4 and laptop to a happy waitress who says, Subscribe to Mr. Beast! And they leave for another restaurant. Ordering another water, the waitress brings out some free bread. Chris wants more bread, but Donaldson is ready to move on and gets the flat screen prime for the giving. This segment is interesting because it gives me a reason to talk about why free bread was ever handed out in the first place. It's thought to be good for business. Free bread is cheap. It keeps diners occupied, granting the kitchen more time to prepare food. Free bread even justifies smaller portions, as no one leaves hungry. From a user experience standpoint, free bread is a touch point used to alleviate stress for all participants. It satisfies the diner, reducing stress for both the server and the kitchen. Free bread is a concept designed to make dining better without inflating costs. No doubt, the first restaurant that offered free bread was popular. So popular that others followed suit. Eventually, every restaurant was expected to provide something for free for diners to munch on. Contemporarily, it's becoming more and more difficult to find establishments that offer free anything outside global chains in the chips and salsa and Mexican restaurants. Indeed, this too would be because free bread is no longer good for business. Appetizers are often the most profitable item on the menu, and with food preparation advancements, it's become a lot easier and quicker to cook them. Bread is common fluff, and diners demand an extraordinary dining experience. Mr. Beast has empathy for these servers, and he should, because he himself is one. From a macro viewpoint, Donaldson is serving up giveaways and entertainment as free bread for the masses. But these actions are not the meal, they're fluff. His content offers exactly what the average YouTuber craves, distraction. After finishing the bread, Donaldson gifts a PlayStation 4, and the video cuts into a Mr. Beast sponsored by promo for Honey, a company that offers coupon codes and really, really wants you to know that they are not selling your data. One takeaway from every Mr. Beast ad is the investment in production. Mr. Beast is often praised for his ability to seamlessly integrate promotions into his content in interesting ways, and that's because he works hard at it. This allows the video to progress without dissolving the immersive experience. With Donaldson presenting the promotion, he imbues it with the trusted perspective and humanistic connection he's cultivated over the years. The extensive cuts make the segment stand out visually, while the goof gaff giraffe tones keeps audience engaged with the content, which in this case is an advertisement for Honey, the people who really, really want you to know they're not going to sell your data. This extra effort is designed to recapture attention, and it, it works. After the ad, they gift a chest full of $301 gold coins to their next waitress. After handing out the gold, which has to be converted into cash, electronics which aren't designed to be converted into cash, the Beast Boys hand out an aggressive amount of coins in a nice and tidy container. This is the problem inherent with the Beast mode of giving. Charitable acts are orchestrated to be outlandish and absurd. With clickability as the end game, philanthropy takes a backseat. The next tip is a printer, a laptop, and a PlayStation 4, which absolutely stuns a girl. I wasn't even supposed to work tonight, she proclaims with her hand over her mouth in excitement. This moment should be celebrated, right? It is fluff, after all. In actuality, it is representative of the working class struggle. 
The reason why a server would say this is either they got the shift because someone called in and they needed the money, or they had the day off but had to come in because someone called off. Either way, work, and by extension money, guided her decisions that day. Paying bills is paramount to living. Maintaining an income stream and a positive employee-employer relationship is the goal. Dreaming to live is not quite the same as living the dream. This video has honest intentions, but the subliminal messaging is problematic. It fortifies a cultural obsession with material wealth by commodifying the struggles of the working class for entertainment. It also presents the solution to those struggles as gold bars and flat screen televisions, reinforcing that materialistic obsession. Consumers want televisions, and this gives viewers the dopamine release they'd have if they bought one themselves. America is a country built around the concept that freedom equals happiness. Somewhere along the line, the American dream was rewritten to be free equals happiness. This type of content reinforces the cultural obsession with material wealth, which ultimately will lead to unhappiness. Everyone wants me to plant 20 million trees for 20 million subs, but obviously is impossible, but I am going to do something insane now. I know you guys want this type of content. I already have a plan, but it might take until next year to pull it off, but it will be worth the wait. Heart Emoticon. That's Mr. Beast on Twitter. Charities only offer temporary support. They aren't meant to solve systematic problems, but rather exist to help those who are struggling through a difficult time. Charities are like painkillers. They take away the pain, but they are not a cure. Philanthropy is different from charity in that it is a holistic philosophy aimed at improving the quality of life for the public good. It's more than just giving money away or even changing someone's entire life. Philanthropy addresses what causes the problem in the first place. The reality is, if Mr. Beast is a philanthropist, then so is Bob Barker for his time hosting on The Price is Right. Donaldson's giveaways function as charities, guided by the potential for entertainment rather than a moralistic philosophy to improve the quality of life. On a traditional television network, guided by viewership, this is expected. For someone heralded as the top philanthropist on a platform as free and universally accessible as YouTube, it's disheartening. Donaldson's channel has many flaws. Exploitation of the working class, apathetic spending habits, sexual objectification, heavy personal bias, an obsession with material possessions, and abundance of material waste. But there is hope. Like I mentioned in my video on Banksy, Mr. Beast has power. His videos have the power to inspire imitators. Mr. Beast has exposed the possibilities of videos based around charitable action, and that is the first step in philanthropic content creation on the platform. Still, what is a millionaire to do with his entire empire built on trend setting? Does he keep looking for the extreme, or does he find something sensible? What is the next step? Donaldson understands the YouTube formula. He was bred by it, but there is something lacking in his method, ethics. If he truly wants to do good in this world, it's going to require a different strategy. He has built a massive community over the years, and now, with a following of over 20 million subscribers, he has power, more than he even realizes. With that kind of visibility, his actions could inspire an entire generation to give what they can to help others. The next great challenge Mr. Beast will have to confront will require a different kind of fortitude than he's accustomed to. We've already seen this in Morgs. Morgs is infamous for ripping off Mr. Beast ideas, so much so that there is actual successful content built around it. Lots of it. One of the best, though, builds on the idea that Mr. Beast is copied by Morgs, a petition to get Mr. Beast to plant trees. This meme taps into the true potential that Donaldson has as a creator and a role model. Like in any market, successful entertainment breeds imitation. This is not something Donaldson can control, but it is something he can guide. His success grants him influential power over the hearts and minds of the audiences to do acts that would make the world a better place. They can also influence him to use his money in a way that has a greater impact on the world and changes it for the better. Now it will have the double effect through imitation. This influence as a trend-defining YouTuber gives Mr. Beast power. So did Mr. Beast ever plant 20 million trees? No. But some school children in India did. 220 million trees in a single day. That's some real fluff for you. Thanks for watching. Died Famous is a project that's focused on giving back with art. Our contributing artists donate their time to make free memorial portraits for families that have unexpectedly lost a loved one. Make sure to comment if you've ever tipped a waitress a TV, because that means you're Mr. Beast, and there's a few things that we could do with some mini gold bars around here. If you're not Mr. Beast, but still would like to support our work, head on over to Patreon and become a patron for exclusive Goof Gap Giraffes.
I'm going to leave you with a quote from Mr. Beast. Literally, nothing terrifies me more than making average content. Thanks again for watching.